Coming up now on 630, new proposed art in Riverfront Park certainly has you at home talking. Today, we will be one step closer to learning what could become a permanent fixture in the park. And a beautiful start to your day. 59 degrees right now, clear and dry conditions. We're talking about a heat wave coming our way for your Labor Day weekend. And this morning, our verified team is tracking down and tackling an online rumor about a new coronavirus vaccine and whether it will take years for kids to get it. Up with Crim begins now. 6.30 on our Thursday morning. Thanks for being with us here on Up with Creme. This morning, fire danger is high across the Northwest. Last night, the Washington DNR tweeted this information. DNR leaders are asking the public to be a part of the solution. They want you to avoid any activity that could cause sparks and to contact local authorities immediately if you do see smoke. Now this morning, Dana Marie McNichol is joining us now with more on the conditions heading into the long holiday weekend. Good morning. Good morning, Jen. Well, right now we're looking at air quality and it is in the good range, although it is almost towards the moderate range. Take a look at this. The moderate range is 50 to 100, so if it gets any above 47 AQI, we're going to look at that. So we're definitely going to track those conditions. I just want to show you where the fires are burning in our area and also where that smoke is going. Now, of course, the winds can shift and it can move a little bit closer to Spokane, uh, but right now this is the projected winds for that area. Hour by hour forecast in Spokane. It is going to be a beautiful day. Winds are not as aggressive as they were yesterday. You can even see the sustained wind speeds at the bottom of your screen there right now. Only three miles per hour at your seven at your 630 hour. Uh, it's going to be a warm one. 89 degrees for your high in Spokane, but definitely near record highs for tomorrow. 95 degrees is for our, the start of our Labor Day weekend and then Saturday, not much cooler for 94. So we're definitely going to see a heat wave come through, but then we're going to talk about your Monday and Tuesday, how those dip down back into the 80s coming up. Joshua. Very much, Dana Marie. This morning we are also tracking a fire near Spangle. The Heaton Road fire in Spangle is burning 320 acres of wheat and timber. That is according to Washington Department of Natural Resources this morning. At our last check, it was 0% contained, but this morning we're checking in with our own Tim Pham, who is tracking the progress that was made overnight. Tim, what's the latest information you've got for us now this morning? Well, Joshua, I can tell you that the air quality has significantly improved here. Earlier this morning, I could tell you that we could smell the smoke and uh, even start to see some of that smoke as the sun began to rise, and we're not seeing a lot of that. Although, if you take a look in the distance, you can see where the fire is burning and some of that smoke that's still smoldering in the Spangle area this morning. A lot of that smoke has uh, kind of stopped spreading because of the wind conditions. It's not as windy and breezy as it was last night. So, I actually just spoke to the incident commander here just a few moments ago before we came on the air and they tell me that they have actually been able to keep this fire from spreading but it is still at about 300 acres firefighters worked overnight and had tankers on standby to put out hot spots and they worked from the ground and by air to keep this fire from growing and protect homes in the area now we are told that the fire is primarily burning wheat and timber and level three evacuations have actually since been downgraded to a level two but of course that means be ready to leave at a moment's notice so people we spoke to who live in the area they say they're relieved but of course are on standby should conditions change so the whole way the uh, smoke was up and i was just following it hoping it wasn't at my house when i turned the corner i was happy it was over here and not this way but my husband was at home with all the animals and calling neighbors for help well, some people use tractors and other farm equipment to draw a line around their property, but still at last check, the fire is still 0% contained as of this morning. I'm told from the incident commander that we should expect some sort of update later this morning when they do their shift change. And uh, we'll of course bring you that information on air and online. Live in Spangle, I'm Tim Pham, back to you. Thank you very much, Tim. And of course, for the latest updates on this fire burning near Spangle and all the other fires across the Northwest, all you have to do is text wildfire to 509-448-2000 for the latest. It is 634 now on your Thursday morning. Our big story, Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward is firing back at Washington Governor Jay Inslee for his comments 
regarding the economy. It's a story you might see on your social media feed this morning. Just yesterday, the governor tweeted, quote, the minimum wage in Washington is higher than any other state. And he says the state's economy is stronger because of it. He added, because Washingtonians know that our economy thrives when people have more money in their pockets. So Spokane Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Woodward fired back last night, questioning how the economy could be strong while so many Washingtons are unemployed due to the pandemic. She wrote, quote, we've been shut down since March. Spokane County has been in phase two for three months. Businesses are barely surviving and the clock is ticking for those that increased capacity outside this summer. So back in July, Governor Inslee indefinitely suspended the ability of counties to move on to the next phase of reopening as cases reached their highest levels of the summer. Well, the stage is set for three presidential debates. President Trump and Vice President Joe Biden will first go head to head on September 29th. President Trump campaigned in the battleground state of North Carolina yesterday. The president used the event to say he thinks the battle against the coronavirus is nearly over. But former Vice President Joe Biden took the opportunity to criticize the president's response, blaming him for the struggles that schools are facing. No real plan for how to help parents feel secure for their children. He's offering nothing but failure and delusions. From the start to finish. Now Biden will be in Kenosha, Wisconsin today. He plans to meet the family of Jacob Blake. Jen. Joshua, thank you. Well, this morning, Nancy Pelosi is taking some heat for a visit to a San Francisco salon. Indoor haircuts there are not allowed due to COVID-19, but the House Speaker says she was complying with the rules as presented by the salon. She says she was misled into thinking it was okay to visit the salon by herself. Now this morning, she is being criticized for not knowing the rules in her own city. I take responsibility for trusting uh, the word of a neighborhood salon that I've been to over the years many times. And that um, when they said, well, we're able to accommodate people one person at a time and that we can set up that time, I trusted that. As it turns out, it was a setup. So I take responsibility for falling for a setup. And that's all I'm going to say on that. Well, the salon's owner shared this video with Fox News. It shows Pelosi inside, not wearing a mask over her nose and mouth. Now, Pelosi says the only time she did not wear a mask is when she had her hair washed. The salon owner again talked to Fox News. They say since she came in without a mask and she feels safe, they question why the city is still shut down. Closer to home now happening today, we will be one step closer to the selection of a new art piece in Riverfront Park. Today, the Joint Art Committee will rank the four finalists from first choice to last. Earlier this year, the committee recommended the beaver you see there on your screen. It's a swiveling interactive piece. Now, it still remains the committee's top choice. However, following some public feedback this summer, the committee will now rank its second, third and fourth picks. The recommendation will be sent to the Park Board, and the Park Board will take the committee's recommendation into account, but ultimately has the final decision on what piece will be selected. So take a look at the other options here. One includes disc structures that bounce sound back and forth. Another includes a maze-like structure with LED lighting. And a third includes a trout made of colored glass and metal. The Park Board, by the way, is expected to make its decision later this month. Now that's actually going to be the second art piece dedicated from the Riverfront Park Redevelopment Bond Project. 1% of the bond funds are dedicated to art. So back in 2018, the Park Board approved the first art piece. It's the step well. The step well is expected to be installed later this year. And Joshua, I know we've been talking about this for the past few months. I think a lot of people uh, had a lot of uh, thoughts on the beaver. <laughs> <laughs> I know when they were talking about that being the recommendation moving forward, a lot yeah. of people were saying, I don't think so, at least by the polls that we took here on Up With Krem. I got to tell you, Jen, over the past few months, though, the beavers kind of worked its way into my heart a little bit. I, I think I think it's my favorite choice now, if I'm being totally honest. Hey, and I will say, when I first saw it, the picture one got me because it's just kind of funny, right. but I wasn't sure if there were actually beavers in Riverfront Park, but I was proven wrong. I went to the light show uh, earlier this year in June, 
And at the end of the night, I'm not kidding, the, the biggest beaver yeah, I've ever that seen healthy boy. rolled right yeah. past me in That's Riverfront right. Park. So I was like, maybe it's a sign. I don't know. He had to prove to you that it was, it was worth a look, Jen. <laughs> That's what he had to do. He's like, look, I got to get my representation somewhere. Exactly. So uh, yeah, it remains to be seen what piece will be decided to, to be put in the park. The park board will have that final decision. That's expected to be sometime later uh, this month. And you can bet we'll follow up on that story too, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up now on 640. Well, it looks like the movie Up came to life. Coming up, how one daredevil took his tricks to new heights. And 59 degrees, clear skies with just a couple of clouds overhead. We're talking about a heat wave coming for Labor Day weekend, and your winds are calming down. Good morning to you ahead only on CBS This Morning, our exclusive interview with Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg. He tells us about new steps the social media giant is taking to control the spread of misinformation before the November election. Also, the CDC tells all 50 states to get ready to begin distributing a COVID-19 vaccine by November 1st, only on CBS This Morning. HHS Secretary Alex Azar joins us to discuss concerns a vaccine approval process has become political. And the National Movement for Racial Justice ushers in new kinds of expression. We'll show you how protest art is being used to send a message and make connections along the way. That's always a good thing. We'll see you at 7 o'clock on The Dot.